So over the next 10 to maybe 20 minutes, I'll try not to go that long, what I'm going to do is walk you through how I search for literature and how I narrow down based upon a research problem that I'm interested in. And, and as I do, what I'm, really, what I'm trying to do is show you my process, which is not the only process that's out there, but show you a process that you could, you could use to uh, search for literature that you'll use for your literature review. And really this will help you for this week's activity that you have uh, to do for this week, and which is finding some research for your the research problem or issue that you have and narrowing it down to, to one and then annotating it. I'm not going to annotate, show you that part of it, because I think you can do that. But what I want you to what I want to show you is how I go from my research problem, just like you've done, uh, that you refined and over the last few weeks, you've refined. Now taking that finding literature and then uh, finding that literature that is appropriate for your topic, and then what, what do you do with it? And so I'm gonna give you some tips as I go through. This is gonna be a very organic presentation. I'll probably screw up, I, you know, so I'm letting you know that now, but I'm really just going through and showing you the process that I do. So I don't have a transcript for this, which I should, but it's so organic that it would be very difficult to do, and so I'm just letting you know that. It doesn't excuse it away, but because I should have one, but again, this is a very organic presentation. So I hope you find this helpful. Take the parts that work for you. Uh, take you know, and I'll tell you when I have tips for you. I'll signpost it by saying, "Hey, here's a tip. Keep this in mind." So here we go. So my research problem that I've been interested in for really for the last few years is looking at professional development in K-12 and really looking at uh, the tools that teachers can use, the technology. Uh, tools, specifically social media, that teachers can use to uh, really personalize their professional development. And this came about because uh, over the last, I don't know, say last five years, especially in California, but really throughout the U.S., uh, funding for K-12 has decreased. It's getting better, but it really was hit hard. Uh, and I think it really, the pinnacle was, you know, five, five or so years ago in California, we had furloughs. We, we had furlough days, our salaries, most places our salaries, even in higher ed, was cut. And one of the things to make up for that lowering of the budgets that K-12 and higher ed received was to cut out professional development. Uh, so some of those days are coming back. Districts are uh, bringing those back into what they do, but it's still not what it used to be. And coupled with that is also the fact that most of the professional development that in K-12 happens to be a one-shot deal that's supposed to meet everyone's needs, and it really doesn't. So what I've, I've been looking at is how can we use what we know about prof effective professional development, which there's a ton of research on that, how can we use social media, what we know about professional development, social media, and social learning theory to uh, in, you know, help teachers engage in professional development that supports their continued learning and growth. And you can see my question there. It's just, it's the start of a question. I mean, a start of the, a question that starts my out, my research. And it is something that I use to focus my literature review. And then eventually I would take what I found and, and build it into an article and, and a, into a book, which I am doing. Uh, and I've done a couple presentations at conferences based upon this idea. So that's my problem, my initial question that I'm wondering. If you look at this, would this be a qualitative or a quantitative study based upon looking at this? Just gave you like a three second pause there uh, to, to think and see what you would answer. Well, the way I'm looking at it, it's more, it's qualitative. I'm, 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 I would ask teachers, uh, I would observe them, I would ask them questions, I would survey them to see what they do with social media and how they use it. So, and that's really kind of the way I'm approaching it. So, how I started with this is looking at the literature. So let's do that, and here's what I do. I, I go to Google Scholar. So Scholar, and there's the URL, scholar.google.com. What I like about Google Scholar is that it, it is a great place to start looking at what is out there and getting an idea of what's out there in the literature to give me an overall idea of uh, literature that would help me for my to, to understand my topic better and my research problem better, but also gathering the literature that I need to write a 
literature review. And this is exactly what you need to do. So you need to have this skill. You need to be able to do this because it will not only help you for this class, but as you're, those who are in 523, you'll, you're, you'll find that it helps with that class. It'll help with every class that you take in this program. And even once you're out of this program, to find what research is out there that can inform you on uh, uh, whatever question you have, wh whatever um, issue that comes up that you want to know more about and what the research has said. I like to start with Google Scholar. Most of the time, if you look here where I just click, that is selected. Deselect it. You don't, we're looking at articles. We're not looking at patents, nor are we looking at case law. So uh, make sure those are not checked. So be, if you remember back to my, my overall, my question and topic, my question is, it's about social media and professional development. So I'm doing a very broad, broad search. Typing in social media plus professional development. There are a lot of tips and tricks to use with Google to narrow down your searches. Uh, adding that plus in there, really what that does is telling Google, I want any article that has the term social media and professional development in it. I could even narrow this down more and some people like to, to do this is putting quotes around words that they want to see next to each other. So I just want professional development next to each other. I don't necessarily want the word professional and, or development. So Google can, will sometimes split it. And so it won't necessarily just look for professional development or look for professional in the, in the article and development in there, even if they're not together. But I, I'm keeping it broad for now. But I am putting that plus because I want Google to look for articles that have both of those phrases in there. So when I click on this, Google will do its magic. And let's quickly look at this page. Notice up here, how many hits? 2,810,000. 2, That's way too many. You'll also notice that the first one that popped up was from 1972. Well, what I want to do is, and I want you all to get into this too, is think of research really that's been in the last five years. The more recent, probably the better. So I want to find articles that have been published from 2010 till 2015. So if you look at the left, the left side where it says anytime, you can do a custom range. I'm going to click on custom range and type in 2010 to 2015. So now what it's going to do is it's going to narrow that 2.81 million down. So I click search, and again, it's gonna look for social media plus professional development, search, and you notice, bam, just knocked to six, 610,000. Now, here's where the tediousness comes in. Uh, I just search through and just look at these. Um, there's online professionalism and in the mirror of social media. It doesn't really seem like what I want, it's more about uh, looking at social media rather than uh, social media and professional development. This next one, personal learning environment, social media and self-regulated learning. This may be one that I want. I keep looking down social media policies at U.S. medical schools now. The challenges and opportunities of social media, maybe, but I look at where it is, business horizons. No, I don't really want that. And you notice, it's not just showing me stuff in education because I didn't narrow it down with any terms of like higher education, K-12, and those type of things. I didn't look at that. I, I kept it broad on purpose because I wanted to see what was out there. So I could scroll down and I could see, I could also go to the next page and look at all these pages. I could go all through them and that's what I do. I go through and maybe the first three or four pages, I see what's out there. But uh, I actually see one down here that I like, professional learning in unlikely spaces, social media and virtual communities as professional development. That may be something that I want to take a look at as well. But I also saw one up here that I want to look at. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on it. And here's a tip that I have for you. Notice what happened when I clicked on it. My search window, it went over top of that. So here's what I do. I'm going to go back. I right click and open it in a new window or I open it in a new tab. So what does that do? Again, I right clicked on it to open it in its own tab. And when I right clicked on it, that, that menu came up to give me that option of putting it in a new tab. That's a tip that I, that I want to pass along because I keep up my search here. And so I go over to the article. I don't have access to it uh, because I'm just going through Google. But if I wanted access, and I'll show you how I can get access to it if, if Cal State Fullerton's library 
has access to, which I believe it does, I look at the abstract, I read it. I read it and see to myself, okay, um, do, I really, do I really want to look at this article? I look at it, it doesn't really talk, it's not really talking about professional development, it's more about student learning, but I'm still curious about it, and I think it'd be a decent one to have. So here's what I'll do. I will copy it, and I'm going over to Evernote, because here's what I do. I created a note in my notebook that focuses in on this research I'm doing. So here, here's what I do. I'm gonna type in social media plus professional development. Why? That's the search term I used. And then I'm gonna start, I'm gonna put in the web address, the URL. That's one of the articles I found when I did this, this search here. So I know, so now I know what I found. Here's something else that I will do. Sometimes I will highlight the abstract if it's available, copy it, and I go. I would go back to Evernote and I could, sorry, uh, paste it, but I, I won't do that. But I could, so that, that's one article. So let's put that on the shelf for right now. I'm gonna go back to, remember there was one other one that I found that I liked, that I thought I liked. Again, professional le learning is in unlikely spaces. International Journal of Emerging Technologies. Um, let's take a look at it. Two, I'm gonna, again, right click, open in a new tab. It's up here. I click on it. And oh, here's something that's interesting. It's, it's in the journal of, what is this journal? Journal of, and I know this journal. I can't remember the name. Oh, Journal of Emerging Technologies and Learning. Perfect. From 2011, here's the abstract. And um, here's the journal information. I could click on that to see. It can tell me about the journal. And the journal has, has a website. So I wonder if I can find uh, this article at the, at the website. So it's an online journal. There, there it is. So I probably could get access to uh, that article. And I'm going to close this. Sorry, I'm closing that window. And I'm going to actually hit the back button to go back to this. So I probably could get this article online. So what I'm going to do first, what did I do last time? I copied it. I'm going to go back to Evernote. And that keeps popping up. And I'm going to put in the URL again. Both of these I, res I got when I typed in Google Social Media Plus Professional Development. That one looks really, really good. So let me see if I hit the table of contents. I do. I, I go to because it's an online journal. So look at this. So um, let's find that article. Professional learning in unlikely spaces, uh, social media and virtual communities as professional development. Okay. I can view the abstract. I can download full text. Since they made it available, I'm going to download the full text. And so there it's asking me on my computer, my system, it's asking me, do I want to open it? Do I want to save it? I, I want to open it and it's going to open in, it's a, it's an Adobe PDF. So I'm going to open it. Here is the article. Okay. I'm not going to read it now. I'm not going to um, go through and, and look at it now because of the time. But now I have the start of my lit review. Is this peer reviewed? Uh, I'm going to say it is because of where this article was found. Is it a is it a study? What kind of study is it? I don't know. I'd have to read through it and and see. Maybe there's some clues. Oh, there is. In this case study, and in the abstract, it tells me it's a case study. So a case study, which we'll learn more about later in the semester, can be qualitative or quantitative. And a case study really t looks at a specific instance or a case and does research on that. So uh, this looks like a good article that is, fits perfectly with what I wanna do. So if I was to read this as a PDF, and I know some of you, uh, I've gotten to a point where, and I, have, I happen to have a, Adobe Acrobat Pro, where I could actually use the tools and I can highlight. I can highlight, hi highlight things and save it and come back to it later and I could actually read online. I will admit 
though I love technology and what these things can do, sometimes, I know this is horrible, but I will print out an article and read it and, and rather than and do it online. But you can do it online, and there it is. So that article works for me. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what I do. I'm going to save as, and I'm going to save it. Don't worry how I'm doing this. All I'm doing is saving this to my desktop. And what I normally like to do is save it as the author's name. So it's KP King. So KP King, and, and I will say social media and article. Okay, I'm saving it on my desktop because here's what I want to do with it. I want to go back to Evernote, get to my note, and I'm going to take that and I'm going to actually put it right in. And you notice what it did? Do you see that it's, it, it kept the highlight on there that I had made? But well, I don't want it to be open like this, so I will right click, and you can do this in Evernote, right click and view as attachment, and it shrinks it. So there you go. So now that link goes to that. And now I'm starting to gather and save my, my, my research articles. This is how I do it. If you, if you feel more comfortable just saving them on your computer and having them there, that's perfectly okay. I just use Evernote uh, as a tool to, to save my stuff. So I won't show you any more about going to here, but this is what you can do. You can create yourself a note. Notice here, these, this is, again, these are the terms that I used. Here are some of the articles. Again, I haven't looked at this one yet, but this one happened to be online, so I found the PDF, it looked good, I saved it. And I'm saving all of that. So now I have all that research that I found in one area. I know the terms that I, I used. I have, I have all that saved in Evernote, and I can access it on any device that I have. So that, that's something that I do. Well, let's go back Let's go back to the article. And I'm going to open the article, and I'm gonna give you a tip. So let's say you find a great article, and this really seems like it. Let's say I've read it, and it, it's like, it hits exactly my research problem. It's a great article, and I'm gonna to scroll to the end. Sorry, no, this is, um, hurts your eyes, but what I, what I like to do is, when I find an article I like, I go to the references. I immediately go to their references and I start looking through them. If you notice, is this APA formatted? I just waited a few seconds there. No, this is not. This is not using APA citations, uh, the formatting that we use. But what I will do is I will look through the, and just take a look at them, transformative learning and professional development context. That may be something I wanna look at I look at these other ones here. I just start reading through them. Transforming learning and professional development, keeping pace with technology, keeping pace with technology, understanding, promoting transformative learning. I will look through the references of an article that I like to see if there's, it points me to other articles that I can find. Uh, quickly, I, I don't really see anything here. I haven't looked at it thoroughly, but that's what I would do. Find an article or two that you like, and then look at what they cited. Okay, as I look at this article, there are some things that you're going to find as you read through it. The introduction, there's a theoretical background, uh, and, and in the introduction, they better tell you very quickly uh, what they did. You'll notice the research method and data collection, the method that they used, the participants, uh, they talk about the findings and then and, and the analysis of that of that data, and then they will discuss and tell you what all of this means. And a lot of a lot of research articles, which they should, they talk about the recommendations and what they suggest, and they also point to future research and and why what they did was significant. So as you look at it, uh, the article, you'll find the things that when you read in Macmillan, what's to be included in an article, uh, uh, they're there. Not all of them will be there because different journals expect different things, different researchers write it up differently, but really you'll find what I just, I just said to you. There's an introduction, there is methods, 
and how they're collecting data. There are the findings and analysis, what they found with the data they found and how they analyzed it. They'll discuss, discuss the data and then end with recommendations and future research. That's a typical, typical article. I, I'll tell you what I normally do if I'm going through these very quickly, just to get a sense of the article. I will go to the introduction, read the introduction. I will find the research questions and look at those. And then I will hop down here to look at the, the, the discussion and the recommendations and kind of get a real overall sense of, of the article. You can take all of that and then annotate that and give a sense of what the article is about. Okay, I'm going to close that and I'm going to give you, I'm going to go back to uh, the one article that we looked at, Personal Learning Environment, Social Media, and Self-Regulated Learning, because we can't access it. It's not available on open, an open journal, open on the web. We'll have to go to the library. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to highlight that, copy it, and then I'm going to go to our library. Okay, so I've already logged into our library. And this is what it looks like if you have not gone to it before. You will have basic search, articles, databases, guides, uh, the whole thing. What I suggest that you do is go to, go to databases and go to education, E. So we're, we're at educate, ed, you can see education, you'll see education pop up. This is one way you can go, go to EBSCO and you can search through there. That's one way. So that's the database. I'm actually going to go back and look at, you can go by articles, the article, and since we know the title of it, that's a good way to go. And if you see this, uh, the menu that pops up, we can search for, let's scroll down to education, and let's see what happens. So I put the cursor in the search area. I'm going to hit my control, uh, my mouse button click to the right or you can go command C if you're on a on an Apple and I'm gonna hit paste and there's the, the title and now I'm gonna search and let's see what it does sometimes it comes up sometimes it doesn't there you go it popped up what's the great thing about using the Cal State Fullerton library I will show you there it is personal learning environments that's the article that we found on the web it tells us a year where it was published the author Full text available, which is great because that's what we want. But here's a very nice thing. See that peer reviewed? That peer reviewed indicates that this is probably a research-based, empirical, uh, empirical-based article, which would work for uh, the the literature review assignment. So now, there it is. And other things pop up too. And look, it's there's other articles that are related to it. And I, I, sometimes I search down, but nothing that I really see that that works for me. So I'm going to go back up to the top. I'm going to click on full text available, see what it does. Oh, it's asking me to log in, which it often will do to you. Bear with me as I log in. It'll redirect you. And there we have it. It'll redirect me. See up here, it says download the PDF. I'm going to download it and it popped up in another window. You, your computer may work differently. Mine happens to open PDFs in another window when I'm in my browser. It could go to your download file. It could go to your desktop. I don't know, it just depends on what, uh, what your computer, uh, how you have it set up. So I might learn some few things from this. And so I would go through it and probably quickly look at it. Social media and higher education, again, it's not really my topic because I'm looking for K-12, but I would go through it and read this. I'm not going to do that now, but what I'm going to do is scroll down, like I said, go to the references, and let's look at these references. Does this look like it's cited using APA? Yes, this is. This is cited using APA. So if you looked at this article, this is exactly how APA would cite a reference section. So I would do that same process. I would go look through Man, it looks like 50 or so. This is a lot of them. I would go through and look at these to see if there are any other ones that I would want to go and find. Um, if I if I like this article and it was on 
on point on what I wanted for my my lit review, my literature review, I would use their articles to go and look at them. So I'm going to write, I'm going to save this, save this file. It happens to be, oops, I don't know why I did that, excuse me. Bear with me, I told you there would be some times where crazy things would happen. I'm going to put this on my desktop. You probably did not see that, but then I'm going to change. I'm changing the uh, the title of it to the author's last name, and I'm going to go back into my Evernote that I had before, and that's this article here. Notice I put my cursor right below, and I'm actually going to. move this to below it. I'm going to drag in that article, the PDF, and it's going to expand, which I don't want it to do. It's very irritating that it does that. I go up back, scroll up to the top, go where to that icon is, the, the PDF icon, and view as attachment, and it closes it. So now, what I've done is, again, social media plus professional development. I started, again, I started in Google Scholar. I found two articles that I liked. I right clicked on them, opened them in a new tab. I went to them. I, I looked at it, looked at the abstract and noticed that, oh, hey, I'm going to have to go to uh, the Pollock Library, Cal State Fullerton Library to find that one. So I, I copied the title, went into, went into my note that I made. And again, you could do this in Word and save this in Word or, or handwrite this down. It doesn't matter as long as you keep it, keep it uh, straight what you did. I know that I used these two terms. Here's the URL and then I eventually went to Cal State Fullerton and got the article, the PDF of it. Um, the other one happened to be happened to be, oh that's the other one, sorry. I already exited the um, the other one that was online. I happened to go to find that other one and they happen to have a their journal was what's called open source um, an open resource and I, I went to their website and I got a copy of it again I took that and went into my my Evernote like I did and this annoying thing is going to pop up there it is and I put it next to where I could find it on the web notice I, I renamed to the the last name of the author so I could easily see which one it is. Okay, that's a very quick search, a way of searching and narrowing it down. Um, hopefully that was helpful for, for you. I could go in, the, my next step after exhausting social media plus professional development, looking at the articles that I found, um, I would go and do additional terms. So maybe social media plus, um, Maybe I was interested in high school teachers. Uh, I would go and do that search, and I'm actually going to copy that and just do it quickly just to see what we would get. So I'm going back to Google Scholar, highlight that, and pasting it. So social media plus high school teachers. Notice that the range is still here. That hasn't changed. So hopefully it'll come up with 2010 to 2015, and I have no idea what I'm going to get here, just to let you know. Um, yeah, I got nothing of what I wanted because look, uh, the fourth dimension in non uh, Euclidean geometry and modern art. Nope, because here's why. Notice that look for social media and high school teachers, it just picked that up. So it, that went a little crazy. And actually, I should have put in plus professional development. Let, let's see what this will do. See if that changes it. Yeah. Uh, there are it does change it teacher professional development teaching and teacher education over 10 years not really what I want the network student model for construction of personal learning environments um, there may be some stuff here but again you notice that you put in other terms and what I would what I would do is I would copy the terms that I put I it notice there's 27,600 so it's a small number I would go back to uh, uh, my 
my Evernote and put in the terms I use. And again, if I happen to find articles, I'd put the URL in there, or I would write myself notes and say, um, with this term, did, did not find articles that worked. So just to make myself some notes. And then I would go on and continue to use different search terms for that. That's the process I use uh, to find, search, search the research, find things that I like. Uh, it, again, start with Google Scholar, customize a range, use a range of different terms. I know some of you probably use Google, uh, searching in Google, and you have other tips like quotes plus pluses. All the different tips to search better in Google can be used in Google Scholar. I'm by no means an expert in it. So uh, that's how I go about doing it, organizing the terms I use, the resources I find, and just keeping notes and keeping track of what I search, search for. It's a tedious process, it can be, but if you are methodical about it, you will, you will be able to find uh, the things that you need and be able to, uh, you'll, be, you'll be happy that you did that because it'll save you time later on uh, as you work on your literature review.